What's up, y'all? It's Daniel Yashumaye, and this is Let's Kick It. That's the way theirs goes. Ours goes. Ding, 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 That little bitty change. It's not the same. It's another episode of Let's Kick It, the show where me and a guest sit down and chop it up and talk about trends, sneakers, and pop culture. If you haven't caught any of the previous episodes of Let's Kick It, I'm going to go ahead and put links in the description down below so you can catch up with previous guests and previous episodes. This week's guest is originally from India, where he received his bachelor's degree in chemical engineering and moved to the United States in 2017 and received his master's in business analytics from the University of Texas in Austin. He's a full-time data scientist at Dell, and in addition to collecting sneakers, enjoys photography, fast cars, and mentoring graduate students. Let's give it up for Rajat Malhotra. Uh, hey, welcome to the show. Thank you for coming down. Yeah, thanks for having me. Or, or coming up. I'm not sure where it is. You know, it, it, it's Either weird. Way. Yeah, we are in the secret, undisclosed location in the caves of Austin. It's by invite only. Yep. So uh, consider yourself lucky because of Chris. Chris Crispy Kicks. Um, you are his, uh, your muse, right? You're the guy who... Uh, kind of. I mean, my, my sneakers are his muse, I would say. That, that's important. Well, speaking of the sneakers, we have to start off with the most important thing, which is letting everyone know what our shoe du jour is. What's on our feet today? Mm -hmm. What is the soup du jour? It's the soup of the day. Mm -hmm. That sounds good. I'll have that. So why don't you lay it for us? Lay it out for us. What do you got? What are you wearing? Go ahead. Well, you can take a stay. You can look up. Okay. There's a dog blocking the way. So <laughs> yeah. Well. So I don't know if you can see it, but there we go. Uh, you, yeah. All right. That'll work. Yeah. So I have like the Tokyo Jordan Five. <laughs> yes, that I you do. Got. Yeah, I mean, I don't know what else to say about them. Like, it's a pretty classic pair. No, it, yeah. I love yellow shoes. Yeah, yeah. Um, now that is um, that's a highly sought after shoe, right? Because how many did they make? Do you know? I don't think I know the number. I just know that they did release only in Japan, only for the store opening. Right. Yeah. Um, my guess is probably less than two thousand pairs, but who's to say? Right. Right. Well, I'm sure there are people that would let us know right now in the comment section. Probably They're like, oh, you idiot! They made. 1200 or blah 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 well now what size shoe do you wear i usually wear an eight and a half to a nine. Oh, okay depending on on the silhouette right 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 so i have a, I, I didn't want to put my shoes on beforehand so that's what i've been i've been wasting time killing time putting my shoes on oh, wow. there's nothing hypey i just want to clarify i decided to go super general release because there's no way i was gonna be able to compete with what you were wearing you, today. you don't have to compete so I mean, um, cool. these are the adidas nemesis 19 plus i found them in paris they were just sitting at the Adidas store. I'd never seen them before. So I thought, hey, these are fun. These might be kind of cool. Because I looked at my collection, I was like, you have everything that I have, and then some. So there's no way I could possibly match you. Oh, whoa, boy, the stage is falling apart here. Um, there's no way I could match you. There's no way I could do any of that stuff. So I just thought, I'll just wear some shoes I haven't worn before. Why not? That sounds like fun, right? Yep. Yeah, all right, all right, I cool. Guess. I mean, like, those look pretty cool. I think they're cool too. Yeah, but, and that that's, that's what's important, right? You shouldn't have to apologize for what you're wearing, but got to explain it. It's a shoe show. So everyone's going to be like, oh, you're not wearing a lot of heat on your feet. Yeah, whatever, 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 whatever. So what I like to do first is a segment that I call soul searching because it's spelled S-O-L-E. And then um, I dig in. We, we, we learn a little bit more about you other than what we learned on the intro. <clears throat> really big shoe. No, no, I can do it better. Really big shoe. Really big. You mentioned in the uh, sort of like your, your notes that you sent me beforehand that uh, like most of us, when we're growing up as kids, our parents don't buy us a lot of shoes because we're growing, our feet change all the time, yep. and who wants to spend $200, unless you're super rich, on a shoe for a kid that's going to change every six months, exactly. right? Exactly. Until you hit your growth spurt. And in fact, you said your parents told you that when you had your own money, you could buy whatever shoe you wanted to buy, yeah, right? I Which, don't think they, they knew I would take that too hard. But. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. So as my mom says, she goes, what did I do wrong? Why do you buy so many shoes? But do you remember the first sneaker that you bought with your own money? The first sneaker I bought with my own money. It wasn't something like super hype. I think it was probably the, it was like a white and green human race. Oh, okay, like yeah. Pharrell human race. I'm, like just for other people to know, like I'm not 
an old collector. I've been collecting only for like four years or so. Sure. So yeah, pretty recently. But yeah, that's that's the first shoe I remember like buying from my own money. Now you mentioned that um, you grew up in India. Yep. And I'm curious, what was your view or understanding of sneaker culture coming from India before you came over here? Um, so I don't think India had a particular sneaker culture when I was there. Mm -hmm. um, only recently, like since I've been collecting, like the sneaker scene in India has blown up. Like, I mean, you can imagine, right? Like one seventh of the world's population is living in India. Yeah. So yeah, like you're gonna have people there that are gonna be interested in sneakers too. Uh -huh. In fact, um, I would also say this, like a lot of the people in India who have money, they love to show off. <laughs> so sure. I, it was only time before, you know, the sneaker world kind of made its way, uh, made, made its way to India. So it's, it's blowing up now, but back in India, like I don't think there was a sneaker culture back when I was growing up. Mm -hmm. So for me, it was mostly about, you know, just going to the sneaker store like Adidas, Puma, mm -hmm. um, Reebok, Nike and just like looking at their shelves, looking at the price tags, not being able to afford any of those and then coming back home with like a $30 sneaker right? Um, every six months. So that was that. <laughs> how fast did your, your obsession with sneakers really, how, did, how fast did it grow? There was no concept of hype in India back then anyway. Sure. Um, and this is up until like 2017, right? Like I, I basically finished my uh, undergraduate degree in India in 2017 mm -hmm. and that's when I moved to the US. Okay. And then, you know, I think it basically just takes like one shoe <laughs> and then you're kind of just hooked. So that's kind of what happened. Like 2017, I bought my first shoe um, with my own money and I was hooked. You do resell sneakers, sorry haters out there, but it's usually to be able to afford more expensive sneakers. Something, something I've done, I sold 13 pairs of sneakers so that I could buy both of the Jordan 1 Unions just because I didn't wear those anymore. I didn't want them. So... You sort, it sounded like you were kind of like apologizing or something. Do you think there's a stigma against reselling? I'm not sure. I think there is, like, uh -huh. especially amongst like the people who've been collecting it for a while and they keep saying the game has changed. <laughs> yeah. Yes, the game has changed. Like, in fact, like since I started collecting in 2017, mm -hmm. things have changed quite a bit since then. I yeah. mean, especially with just 2020 with like COVID, I saw so many things being done differently. Um, and literally everyone kind of becoming a reseller. Yeah. <laughs> I became a reseller not to like, not for the money aspect of it. Yeah. I, I became a reseller because I was bored at home like during COVID. And I honestly didn't know what else to do with my life at that point. I'm like, I'm not meeting friends. I'm not really going out. <laughs> right. So I was like, okay, yeah, you know, this is cool. Like this kind of, kind of keeps me invested in the hobby. Um, and gives me a little bit of side income. So why not? So do you consider yourself the quote, a sneakerhead? I mean, I don't know what the definition is, but <laughs> as far as like the amount of time that I spend looking at sneakers, um, consuming sneaker content, yeah, uh, just staring at my own sneakers, uh, clicking <laughs> pictures, yeah, uh, talking to like going to all these like sneaker events, mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. it's unhealthy if I won't call myself a sneakerhead, yeah, because I'm I'm putting in too much time to, to be able to do that. Right. So you mentioned earlier that you have sold your entire collection already twice before, right? So right now, currently, how many sneakers do you have in your collection? As of today, I'd say about 35 pairs. Okay, that's, that's, I've that's had, not bad. I've had 160 pairs at the, at the max, uh -huh. and then now I'm back down to like 35. Wow. But I would say this, like the 35, in terms of the value, would probably equal the 160. I was gonna, and that, that's one of the questions, but we'll get to that in a second. You know, and if we follow your Instagram, which we put the link up, everyone can go check it out. You have so much so much what people would consider heat, right? Like a ridiculous amount of high valued shoes that people want. And on your Instagram page, you specify, yes, all the sneakers are mine, right? Cause yeah, because I, I keep getting that question. Like, <laughs> uh, But this is not from the sneaker heads, actually. It's also from my like other friends. Okay. They're like, are all of these yours? Sure, sure. And then obviously the next question to follow after I answer yes is like, are you crazy? <laughs> but you know, I'm guessing that's something that everyone, every sneaker head has kind of heard every at, at yeah. Some, some people just, they don't yeah. they don't they don't understand it. It doesn't they don't comprehend why we would do what we do. It is what it is. So you, you you when we talked, you mentioned you do buy shoes through quote unquote resale, right? But not all the but they're not always DS, right? Can you can you share your philosophy on that? You, you told it to me earlier, and I think it's totally fresh. So the main thing is that I want to wear my sneakers. Yeah. Um, buying DS sneakers and knowing that the moment I wear them, like 
I'm gonna lose like three, four hundred bucks, which is a lot of money, like especially when you're looking at higher end pairs. For sure. Um, so yeah, I mean, I usually tend to go for like used pairs. I, it takes me a while to find uh, used pairs in good conditions from like ledger buyer, ledger sellers, and making yeah. sure that you know, like they they don't have any flaws, and then they come with like OG all and everything. Because like as a collector, you are kind of particular about certain things. Yeah. And yeah. You're particular about, and you're not particular about certain things. So yeah, getting used stuff mostly it's always about just wearing it, and like if I can save a bunch of money in the process then why not like you know it gives them a second life too like if the other person who's selling them doesn't want them anymore yeah yeah then yeah like i think that's a good thing like it kind of is like sneaker recycling yeah which is a good thing so that's 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 totally awesome so you said that you think your collection now is the same value of when you had 160 so where would you where would you what do you think how much how much is your current collection worth do you think i'd say anywhere between like 35 and 40 thousand dollars and reselling again like i'm i'm okay with holding my pairs and stuff over time they do go up in value so it's yeah. like like i say it's never about like the money it's never about like getting the top dollar mm -hmm. um but it's also about like just making a little bit sense for me to like be able to sell the sneaker because if i have a shoe i paid 200 bucks for and i'm like okay it's going for like 400 bucks right now and i'm never gonna wear it yeah. yeah i mean like i'll sell it for 350 i'm like okay if the market is 400 someone gets it for cheaper at that point in time and i've still made money yeah that's fine. yeah why does the last guy chug out of a shoe? It's no shoe! It's just boots! Alright, so now we're going to do the sneaker news portion of the show, which I call the sneaker report. Okay. We're just going to look over some of the latest releases, get your opinion on it, see what we think, right? And this is a really Yeezy heavy week of releases for some reason. I don't know. It's just the way it is. Um, yesterday, uh, we saw the release of the Yeezy Boost 700 Wash Orange. Okay. Uh, do you have an opinion on this silhouette, on this colorway? Do you care? Um, I mean, as like 700 as a silhouette, yeah, I care about it. It's a pretty solid sneaker. Yeah. Um, you know, like the Wave Runners, when they did come out, like, I think initially people didn't like them. No. And then like, they just kind of like, yeah. And they, once you wear them, like, and how comfortable they are. Yes. Um, you kind of change your mind. Absolutely. But I feel like, and this has been said time and time again, everything kind of looks the same mm -hmm. after a certain point. Yeah. And if you've looked at my collection, like it's very color colorful. So I'm like always trying to go for like something that's crazy on feet and stuff. Mm -hmm. Not saying these are not crazy, but there's already been like two or three colorways I can see that have been kind of similar. Exactly. So yeah, I mean like I don't have any like particular opinion on these, uh, on, on the 700 like, yeah. silhouette yeah. as a whole. It's a, it's a good silhouette. Yeah. I mean, like, you know, I had I have a couple of them already in my collection. Right. I wear them from time to time. So. Sure. Yesterday, I or the same day, we had the Yeezy Boost 380 Pyrite and Stone Salt. Uh, do you like the 380s? Do you care about these colors? Uh, I got the first one, the Aliens. Yeah. Um, uh -huh. I think they were called. And uh, yeah, one of the more comfortable Yeezys with just like how much of Boost is yeah, in, in for real. So, um, so yeah, good shoe for sure. Um, and I'm guessing like with so many colorways coming out and the hype really not being there, people can actually pick it up for like wearing on a yeah. general basis. Mm -hmm. um, I, I love lighter colored shoes. Yeah. So for me, like out of these two, I would say I would go with, I'm guessing the black one is called the pyrite. So the other one, like the chalk. I guess so. Pyrite and stone salt. So I, yeah, so I, I'd, I'd probably go for the stone salt. The, the, lighter, like the lighter one. Lighter basically. shoes. Yeah. So apparently this Friday, the Nike SB Dunk High Strawberry Cough. Finally. Finally, right? I'm not a Dunk fan, so I'm. I, I would only get them to try to resell them or to trade them. But are you gonna? Are you gonna work your magic? You're gonna get them. Uh, I don't know what magic is. <laughs> um, if if hitting for retail is magic, then I yeah. don't know how to do magic. That I can tell you. Um, but yeah, I mean, this is. I think this is one of those pairs that we've seen around for so long. I think it probably like showed showed up like when COVID was just starting yeah, out. Yeah, uh -huh. People started getting like all these no box pairs and stuff. Yeah. Uh -huh. Highly controversial shoe with, you right. know, having that that um, that heel logo with like the strawberry like coughing. Uh -huh. Like a lot of people said that, oh, these pairs are fake. Like the original, like the pairs that come out like retail wouldn't have that stamp on, on the heel and all that. Right, right. Um, so I guess like there's still buzz about it. Like the, I've seen like people go crazy over it. For sure. Um, it's definitely like um, a 420 themed sneaker. Yep. So I already have the reverse skunks. I would definitely be going for these. Mm -hmm. uh, but not to resell. I think it's a good pair to have in your collection. And like I said, for me, uh, crazy colorways are always welcome. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is pretty crazy. Like red and green. Like you don't see a lot. And it could also double up as a good... Christmas sneaker. Yeah, <laughs> Christmas shoe. That's 
it, you're absolutely right. Another Yeezy, the Yeezy Boost 350 V2 MX Oat. It's supposed to be this weekend also. It's a, now it's a crazy mixture of colors. I like it. I mean, like I said, I, I like crazy shoes. Yeah. So for me, I'm like, yeah, I'd wear something like this. And it's a lighter color shoe. Like I'm always up for lighter color shoes. Like, and this is not something that looks like all the other 100 yeah. 350 V2 colorways. So yeah, I mean, this is a good colorway. I think, I think, um, you know, it would look good on feet. Like I, I usually wear like darker clothes, as you can see. Right, sure. So it's like usually black on black. So something like this, it uh, always stands out. Yeah, for real. Now you got the Nike and Pata Air Max One why do, I, why do I sense that there is some oh, sort of like man. regret? I'm so mad. Well, I checked the resale. It doesn't look ta that bad. Yeah, it's not that so bad. So I'm like, okay, I think I could swing it. But they just said they're gonna come out with another colorway, the Noise Aqua. Do you like this? What do you think? How does it compare, etc.? A solid, solid like summer colorway for next summer. Oh yeah, for so sure. So even if it releases now, I'm definitely gonna get a pair. Like I'm a huge Air Max One fan. Like Air Max One is, uh, my favorite silhouette of all time. Mm, like, okay. um, whether it's like any other shoe, any, any brand, any shoe. Um, I think the most number of sneakers I have mm -hmm. is like all Air Max ones. Gotcha. Um, so it's my favorite, like it just looks good on my feet. So that's why I kind of go for them. So for me, like when I saw them the first time when, when the renders came out, yeah, I knew I'm going to get them. Um, and then when I got them in hand, I'm like, yeah, okay, that, this is pretty cool. In fact, they actually came out with the third colorway that, um, that they teased recently. It's like a, like an all burgundy color. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, I, that I looks pretty cool. Yeah. Too. Let's get some shifts. Let's get some shifts. Let's get some shifts. Let's get some shifts. So we're gonna move on from shoes that I don't have that have been out there to shoes that I did get recently to get your opinion. There's a secret surprise. There's not a surprise. Um, at the end, it's 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 the first time it's ever happened. So um, I bought some of these shoes like later and whatever, and I found this shoe almost pretty much under retail. Um, I don't really wear dunks. I, this is my first dunk high. The only reason I got it, well two, number one, I love how loud the colorway is and then I love the the, cra the crazy swooshes. Yep. Um, I just like these ambushes. So what, what do you think about the, this shoe? Did you pick this up from Out Hype? No, no, I, well, I ordered they it. They had a go, pair Because it was under retail. But they have, I, I want the navy blue ones. Okay. I think Out yeah. Hyped might have it. Shout um, out to, to Alan. Yeah. So these, uh, I already have a pair. Um, and these are the only ambush dunks I have because like you said, yeah. Loud colorway, but it also reminds me of the off-white World Air Force ones. Uh-huh, uh -huh. um, Like I had a pair in my collection, I ended up selling it. Never ended up getting it back, even though like the resale hasn't really shot up from when I sold it. Right. But I was like, it's pretty much the same colorway. It's a high, like I love high sh higher shoes. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm, I'm a big fan. Yeah, it's a good shoe. Now this is zero hype. In fact, somebody on the channel suggested I review these shoes. It's a Retropy. It's supposed to be a variation on Entropy. I don't know. It looks like it's an Aniki on the top and some sort of ultra boosty midsole. You can get them, I think they retail for like $90. Um, That's not bad at all. Yeah, yeah. What do you, what do you think about this, this shoe? A good, a good, I know it's not bright, but you know. It's a, I'd wear it. I mean, like, um, if, if the shoe is not bright, then I would probably go for like earth tone sort of, because yeah. it's still lighter. Mm -hmm. I can't do dark shoes. Like, I'm, I'm a shorter guy. Yeah. So sure. whenever I wear like darker shoes, I kind of look shorter. So at least that's what I kind of feel like. Sure, yeah, it could yeah. Be, it could be different from like another person's eye, but um, this I would wear like, um, you know, something similar in like uh, what I have in like New Balances and stuff. Yeah, like very this, similar colorways. This gives off that vibe. Yeah, so yeah, I yeah. would wear it. Like, yeah. So are you familiar with Mosh at all? So Mosh, they had his latest one, the St. Charles colorway, it's supposed to be about- pretty cool. Mosh is the same company that is doing these like tie-dye customs as well, right? Like I on... believe so, yeah. Um, so it's like Garrickson Studio in Philadelphia. I think that's his 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 shop. But you know, it's not, It's a, It's a. I guess it's a sole proprietor kind of guy. It's just a guy who designed some shoes and I think they're pretty cool. I've gotten all the colorways so far. What do you, what do you this think? This colorway about? reminds me of um, one of the Air Max 90s that I really, really want. Okay. Um, if you've seen the the homegrown Air Max 90s, I'll, like I'll a, put up a picture when we when we put okay. the video it's, up. It's like a green upper and like orange. Oh. Uh, like inside is like orange leather and stuff. Okay. So like if I can't get those, like now that I'm looking at these in person, and they're a chunky shoe. I love chunky shoes yeah. on feet. Like they look good. Yeah. Uh, I'll wear it. I'll I'll probably like I, I also saw one of your videos where you like I always change the laces and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I would probably like go for a louder lace option, maybe like orange. In this, yeah, it probably yeah. Probably look pretty cool. I think there's another lace. I think it's white. I don't know, but yeah, I you know it's just I went with these laces on there. But another non-hyped silhouette. But 
Um, have you tried the Nike Overbreaks? I at actually all? did. I tried it in the other colorway that uh, that was like the Mars Yard, I think. Yes. Also had uh -huh. like a similar. Uh -huh. what, do you, what do you think? Are they comfortable? I think these are like some of the most comfortable. Most comfortable. Yeah. Like I, I had the same feeling. I'm like it, but it's also like a shoe that rides pretty high. Um, yes. It's got. It's a. It, thick. It's a pretty chunky. Yeah. So, uh, cool shoe. Um, I don't think I'll wear it um, because it's too chunky. Like sometimes I'm like, <laughs> yeah, it does. When you look down on it, it is pretty like, oh my yeah, gosh. Yeah, it's like very wide yeah. kind of shoe. Uh -huh. But um, but that Mars Yard colorway, like that was the first one I saw, and I was like, okay, that looks good. Yeah, that's what yeah, I wear to UT games because it's got a kind of a burnt orange khaki type of look to it. So yeah, got this at kicking it. Shout out to Greg and uh, Colin and, and the boys and the gang. All right, so this is special. I told a story about this. I walked into Out Hyped, and lo and behold, they had the Sean Witherspoon Air Max, whatever they call it. Uh, sitting there in my size at a really good deal. Um, I tried it on. I didn't know they had the, the insole felt, and I was like, oh crap, now I have to buy it. I didn't buy it, my friend bought it. Um, and I think like five minutes after Alan posted it on Instagram, you messaged me and you go, hey, you bought my shoes. So funny thing is I was actually at Out Hype like 30 minutes before you were. Seriously? <laughs> Which is why I was looking at the stories and I was like, I literally came to the store and I was like, Alan, how did these not sell? I think he, he had them at a pretty, Saw the price. I remember what the price was that he had them at. Um, I was like, "How the hell did these not sell?" Like, I'm I'm gonna come back tomorrow and just take them back if they don't sell. Uh -huh. And like 30 minutes later, I look at the story and they're like, oh, "It's sold." I'm like, "Oh well." Well, I'm glad you decided to sell the shoe because now I own it. And I'm uh, glad it went to a good home. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, that's why I hit you up. I'm like, "Oh yeah, that was my old friend." Awesome. It's just so crazy, man. Yeah, it's a small world. I'm like, it really is. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Kids. Did anyone pray for giant shoes? I did! Hokily dokily. So the last segment I called Just for Kicks, because <laughs> it's just for kicks, right? Anyway, um, you already answered one of the questions earlier when I was gonna, one of the questions is what's your, your favorite silhouette? And you said it's the Air Max, right? Um, but right now, is there a favorite sneaker maybe that, um, that people don't like or that they hate? Maybe they call it a brick, maybe it's sitting, but you really like it. Um, I don't know if they would call it a brick or if they hate it, but my the pair that I wear the most nowadays, um, it's the Air Fear of God 1 Raid. So th there's like, I mean, the OG colorway again is like the light bone colorway. Mm -hmm. It goes pretty much with, like like I said, I wear darker clothes. Yeah. So lighter shoes always go well with that. But I would say like that's something that people would probably call a brick compared to like its older cousin. Right. Like the Fear of God 1s. That makes um, sense. But I really love that shoe. Um, yeah. I think it looks really good and it's like a really sleek sneaker. Yeah. So for someone who has like thinner legs, I think it looks right. really, really no, good. No, totally. So is there a, a sneaker that you're tired of people talking about? Oh, I love it. I think it's amazing. And you're just like, I just don't like that shoe. I think the comment section is going to murder me if I say this. Uh, because this is going to be the third time on your show. I think the show is going to get cancelled <laughs> <laughs> because of this. Because Chris said this. Uh -huh. Both the Chris's said Both this. Both Chris's, yeah. Um, and I'm going to say this as well. I have tried so many pairs of Jordan 11s and for some reason I can't seem to wear them. Like they don't <laughs> look good on my feet. I don't know why. They look cool like on a display. They look cool like sitting there. Yeah. As soon as I wear them, I'm like, mm. uh, the only, but, but there is a caveat to that. Like I do have a pair that, um, that I, uh, I really like. Um, if you've seen the Pinnacle Jordan 11s, so this is like an all suede, um, gray suede pair. Oh yes, uh -huh. it's, it's. I think it's the most expensive Jordan ever eleven to ever release, like retail wise. It yeah. was like the re it retailed for like four hundred bucks. Oh. But that's the only one that looks good on my feet, and I think the reason for that is like because it doesn't have a break in its pattern, like it, ha yeah. it has no pattern leather uh -huh. and stuff. Um, it just looks like one cohesive shoe, uh, and it's a great winter shoe. But like any other pair that I've tried, I'm like, no. But I, for for the lack of a better like sneaker that didn't come to my mind, I'm like, I think that's that's the one I would go with, which. Uh, you know, my popular opinion is like popular. Right. So, so you're not excited about the cool gray re-release? Re not really. I mean, like now that I have like the pinnacle gray ones, honestly, like the cool grays don't really excite me as much. Right. Um, yeah, that makes sense. Now, is um, what is your favorite sneaker of the moment, or is it the one you're wearing right now? But I think right now my favorite model that I'm like liking a lot in terms of like the colorways that are coming out um, is the New Balance uh, 2002R. So if you've okay. seen the Saleh Bambari, um, like he did like two collaborations with New Balance. Okay. There's like an orange pair and then there's like a blue pair. All right. I think one is called like Peace Be the Journey and the other one's called Water Be the Guide. And then uh, New Balance did like another one which for out of nowhere that that shoe just like 
um, is going for a lot of money now. Um, I was happy I picked a pair up at like Nice Kicks. Yeah. Um, it's called the Rain Cloud. Um, it was pa- it was part of this thing called the Protection Pack. There were like three colorways. There was like a Salt, which is all white, Anthracite, which is all black, and then there's like a Rain Cloud, which is like uh, gray and like white combined. They're great. No, that's 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 fantastic. I'll put some pictures up there on there. Are there any shoes or a shoe that you don't have yet? It's on your list. Like I have to get this shoe. It's what's gonna go in your Grail wall or whatever. So I think the two sneakers that I'm waiting on right now. Um, one is just from the standpoint of like when I said I'm a collector that tries to go for the set. So I have like the Travis uh, OG lows, OG highs, and the the Fragment lows, and just picked up the Fragment OG ones as well. So now the only thing missing is like the Fragment Travis highs, and I I don't really like the sneaker. And it's going for a lot of money, which is why I've been on the fence for a while now. Yeah, but I think at some point before the end of this year, I'm gonna pick up a pair um, just to complete the set. So th- that's one. And the other pair that's on my list and has been for a while is the Mars ER 2.0. <laughs> yeah, um, that's a that, that's a good shoe. That's a good shoe. Now, um, how do you like to lace your shoes? Like looking at it, do you like to go over? Do you like to go under? I usually go over. Um, yeah, it's yeah. just easier to kind of keep them all straight. I yep. feel like, um, and it just looks good, I guess. So, so the last question, it's it's just it's more of a like, hey, what is it about sneakers that makes you love them so much? I don't know. I feel like every time I'm wearing like a new shoe, mm-hmm. um, even if I'm having like a shitty day or like a good day or whatever, if I'm going out, if I'm wearing like a new shoe, it just gives you that confidence for some reason. Like you wear it and you're, you're like you just feel like a new person. Sometimes I don't know if it happens with other people. It happens with me a lot of times. You know that you're. Feet size is you know, foot size is not going to change mm-hmm. for the rest of your life. Yeah, so that that's a good thing because you know that you can own these things for however long that you want, and then you're not going to grow out of it. Yeah, so that's you know that's another thing I I love about sneakers. No, that's solid. That's Any solid. everything else in your life can change. Sneakers. Will. There, there you have your quote. You and Chris, you like, y'all like, you know, come out and you know, end with these great philosophical quotes. Well, Raja, thank you so much for coming on the show. Nobody leaves empty-handed well. um, for your skateboard or or for your Tesla. I don't think you own a Tesla. We have some stickers from the official Shoe Shoe Channel. That's pretty cool. Um, yeah, only if you come on the show do you get stickers. So, well, see, then, then, that's going to be worth something on StockX or Go or maybe well, Alan. I'm not going to sell them. Maybe Alan will I, give I'm you a I'm a reseller, but that doesn't mean I sell everything. <laughs> there are resellers out there that, that Sell. <laughs> I don't want to say what. Before we wrap up, the floor is yours. This is usually where people get to plug whatever they want. So uh, you can look into the camera and let everyone know what you want. So yeah. So I've been trying to grow my Instagram presence just because I love like photography and I love like I keep copying new shoes from time to time. So if you want to check out my Instagram, it's, I think the link's gonna be. It'll be up there. Yep. Up here somewhere. Um, yeah, give, drop me a follow, drop me a message. I always love talking about sneakers. That's how I connect with most of the people on Instagram. So yeah, uh, looking forward to meeting more new people. Yeah, absolutely. So that does it for today's episode of Let's Kick It. Let us know in the comment section down below what you thought about today's episode of uh, his hot takes. Uh, the no love for the Jordan 11 Cool Gray. That's three guests that are just that's, like yeah, that's just Austin that's, for you, that, I guess. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, and maybe let us know who or what you might want to see in future episodes. So thanks again to my guests, Rajat Mahotra, and of course to all of you out there wherever you are. Uh, thanks for watching. Stay tuned and just chill till the next episode. <laughs>